So now we know fundamentally why they did it because they needed money. So let's look at this. Their cost and pricing. According to their financials for 2018, they sold 90 million cups of coffee for the whole year. The average price that they were able to charge was $1.30 per cup. And for the whole year, they lost $226 million. So that means the cost of each cup of coffee was $3.80. They were only able to sell it for $1.30. So for every one cup, that they sell, they lost two cups. And that is an amazing rate of cash flow. For 2019, they still sold their coffee around the same price. So at a store level, we know it's, it's very hard for them to make profit. And two is their user base. There were a lot of downloads for their app, but according to this big data firm, they tracked how active the, the users are for locking coffee and they, there was only 1% of the downloads that were active uh, users. Their downloads is about four times as many as Starbucks, but their active user is only one-tenth of Starbucks. Uh, we know that their actual sales number was uh, is going to be much, much lower than what they reported on their financials. And it's very possible what they did was they actually funneled the money into this company called Focus Media, and then the money comes back into their account, kind of further inflate their sales. Basically, they're treating their income statement like the balance sheet. You know, they're kind of balancing it out, right? You, uh, you know, the, the income is the asset and the expenses is the liability. So they're kind of, you know, inflating both uh, to create a, a growth story, a bubble, but, at, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, it's very hard to trace, or at least they, they believe it's very hard to trace because at this stage, people aren't really expecting them to uh, start making a profit as long as they're turning into the right directions. So the next one, I think they have a, a huge issue is their management because their COO, now he's no longer with the firm. Soon after that, a independent director left the firm and uh, their CTO, who was only been with the company for about eight months. And this CTO, he has a, a great track record. And also, why is he so important to this company? Well, if you really think about Lock and Coffee, what's what makes them different? Because they market themselves under you know a, a technology company. So the CTO leaving is actually a big deal. So we spent a lot of time talking about cash. The moment they stop getting additional funding, or the moment the next person or the next sucker stops coming in, they will dry up. Given What's going on with the current scandal? It's almost impossible for the company to receive additional cash, especially now that their business model hasn't really been proven. There are a lot of instabilities within the firm. I actually went on social media looking at how just regular people are reacting to them, how their employees are reacting. There were a lot of negative uh, sentiments uh, regarding the company. It's not like Chinese people don't care about right or wrong. The firm is not doing something right. When it becomes a national embarrassment, people tend to steer away from it. So we talked about how their business model doesn't work. They don't have a loyal customer base. They are in desperate need of cash in order to continue their story. And now that lifeline has just been cut off of it. They had to put the numbers. They have reached the breaking point where they will no longer be able to survive without doing it. We all know how the entire services industry have been impacted by COVID-19. I believe their sales have been hit just like everybody else. And because they have so many store locations that were about to open, right? Either open or about to open. Either way, they already have expenses incurred, right? Either they already signed the lease paying rent or it's under renovation and but right now they can't open. So they have basically a lot of dead money that they put down and continue to spend without being able to open. Given how much other businesses have been impacted, I believe their sales for first quarter of this year is only a, a small fraction of what it was last year. The next point is the default chairman and the CEO. They borrowed $500 million. They pledged their equity against the loan as the collateral for their loan. And when the share prices tumbled and somehow they defaulted on their loan, and the banks headed by Goldman Sachs has to recall all of their shares. And when you convert their shares to the ADR, about 76 million shares. The chairman of this company, Lu Zhengyao, he's the CEO of another company in China that's being public traded. He personally has a lot of connections within financial industry and uh, he's the person behind orchestrating the entire deal from seed funding to eventually going public. So he is very experienced. 
if he's not able to find somebody else to fund him, that's possibly because his other company is also in trouble. They also need cash. Otherwise, he will find a way to somehow funnel money from the other company into this one and save his shares. Because if you look at it, at forty dollars a share, all the stocks that they pledged is worth about three billion dollars versus the loan itself at only five hundred million. If they still believe that their company is worth something around this number, they would somehow find a way to to not default on their loan. The fact that they did because they really didn't have any other options. They have they just ran out other resources, their arsenal. And they cannot come up with the money to make the payment. On the other hand, you know they don't have the shares anymore. What is there left for them to care for? Because they're no longer at least the CEO. She will not have any ownership of the company anymore. So what is she really doing now that she already basically cashed out? And the other one is, I think it's it's something that's been kind of brewing in the background for a long time is uh, because of this actual short sale report that was. Handed to Muddy Waters, right? It was done by somebody else. And if you actually read the report, you look at it, how detailed it was,、uh, the amount of work that went into it, and also the amount of、uh, the amount of information this person has, it just looks like somebody that's from the inside. This person knows about the company, knows the in and out. This person knows exactly where to look. He, this person knows the industry, the founders from a long time ago. He knows their history. This report definitely looks very personal.、Uh, there is definitely some animosity that's been going on for a long time. So it's not a coincidence. Another indicator that I looked at behind the scenes is、uh, um, the convertible bond that's being traded. Even though the stock is halted, but the convertible bond for some reason is still、uh, being traded. And、uh, when the stock was halted, the bond value actually just went. Tumbled alongside the price of the stock, it dropped to its lowest ten cents on the dollar. The, the convertible bond actually、uh, has a conversion price at fifty six, you know, fifty four dollars,、uh, somewhere around there. So basically, at the current price of the stock, there is no real possibility of conversion happening. So the bond actually matures less than five years. It matures in January of twenty twenty five. So in less than five years, the company would have to pay back. At par, even in a scenario of the company actually going bankrupt or, or restructure, they would still have first claim because it's a senior unsecured debt. And at this point, the company is not carrying any long-term debt. So basically, they whoever owns this bond has claim over their assets, over their cash. We know that they have about a billion dollars in their cash account. Whoever owns this bond. Will be able to get to receive par in 2025, so less than five years. And what that means, and at the same time, obviously they are receiving a coupon payment every six months, and that gives the owner a 78% annualized return, compound annualized return. So a lot of bulls, what they do is they actually look at this as a signal. They know that usually the change in the convertible bond is a indication of. The change of the underlying equity price. So they are looking at okay. So it was trading at ten cents per dollar, and then a few weeks later, it started trading again, and then the price went all the way up to thirty-two five to the dollar. And they see it as okay. So this tripled in price. That means you know whatever the stock closed at, which is four thirty-nine, that's going to triple. Well, convertible bond is only correlated to the stock price. It's very similar to options, right? It's correlated to the stock price to a certain extent, like when you are very close to the conversion price. The further away the actual price of the stock is from the conversion price, the less of a correlation there is between these two. However, what this does tell me is, even at this price, you're still getting a 29%. Annualized compound return, and you still have first claim because you're a senior unsecured. If the company were to go bankrupt, it's very possible that I can double my investment within a year by pricing it at 29% return. The market is still pricing in a very high default risk because we know a lot of the high yield funds are only returning between eight to nine percent. So having something that's returning close to thirty percent means it's much more likely. To、uh, to default on this loan, 
And at the end is the sentiment surrounding locking coffee in China, both within the business community as well as the consumers, because I've actually read something online that people went into locking coffee store, and、uh, the store is unexpectedly empty a lot of the times. They spend a good amount of time there on different days in different stores, and they are seeing very consistent, a、uh, very consistent phenomenon. After they announced kind of financial scandal, there was a huge rush of you know people going into the stores because they were scared that the money they put into their app will no longer be able to use. They were selling a lot of like prepaid cards. If you buy a hundred, you only pay seventy for a hundred something like.、That. So a lot of people were. Already depositing the money into Locking Coffee's account, and then you know basically they were just waiting to use it over time. For a lot of those customers, either one they were using very low discount coupons, or they are using money that was already paid into to Locking Coffee. So they were drinking those coffee while Locking, on the other hand, will have to spend more money for purchase more supplies、uh, while there is no cash coming in.